The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. So in the previous chapters of Atomic Habits, we covered some of the neurophysiological framework to forming habits, the science of forming habits, identity change, uh, chapter two, which is probably one of the most formative, powerful, profound chapters in this book. And now we come on to chapter four, the man who didn't look right. And now we're about to cover the four laws of behavior change, starting with law one. Q, make it obvious. And so as the forthcoming chapters go along, we'll be going through these four laws, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. And diving into basically, this is this is actually how we establish engineer habits, constructive habits. And we're going to start right here with this quote. We're so used to doing what we've do always done that we don't stop to question whether it is the right thing to do at all. So we get stuck in these loops, these feedback loops, and we're constantly habitually performing actions and behaviors just because that's what we know, that's what we do. And of course, that's right, right? Well, maybe not. You know, you once you travel around the world, you begin to say everybody has formed all these different habits. Um, and you start to see firsthand that, wow, these people are living very differently to me. And I don't necessarily agree with it. Or maybe they show you something about your own habits and they ref reflect something that you could be doing better among yourself. Whether it's movement, whether it's just being more mindful in your day to day. Um, I think when you travel to poorer, lower social economic countries who don't have a lot of the modern luxuries that we do, you see that they do a lot with less. And you also see that their stress, how neurotic they are, is hugely diminished. And I think we get stuck on the feedback loop, the, the treadmill of life. We don't stop to question whether what we're doing now is serving us and how it could be harming us, taking away from that present mindfulness that a lot of these other communities around the world still have been able to maintain. We'll continue. The process of behavior change starts with awareness and recognition of habits. You need to be aware and honest about them before you can change them. Then learn and acknowledge the cues that trigger them especially by verbalizing your habits. This sets you up to respond in a more advantageous way that benefits you instead of harming you. So it's this first, we need to be aware, okay? Uh, we need to be honest about ourselves. We need to do some type of self-reflection, whether it's journaling, whether it's just sitting there and just thinking. You know, it's very underrated and, and like, when's the last time you just sat in a quiet room by yourself and just, you didn't, you didn't try to not think. You didn't try to classically, stereotypically meditate, okay? And that's a whole nother thing, how that, can be counterintuitive, uh, trying to eliminate thoughts. But you actually just sat there and thought, you tried to work through a problem, you know, you problem solved, and you brought some awareness to some issues or some just basic behaviors that you exhibit. You don't need to be directly aware of a cue for a habit to begin. This is what makes a habit equally useful and dangerous. Your autonomic nervous system and reticular activating system will sort through the numerous cues around your environment subconsciously and bring the conscious mind what is most relevant. We all end up performing habits throughout the day via cues we don't really think about in, env in our environment. You know, we, underst we don't exert any extra effort to use the bathroom to brush our teeth. Everything is there in the environment. The toothbrush is there, the toothpaste is there, the fridge is there for the food. Everything has its place and a necessary cue to trigger the subsequent response and reward behavior. So we can use, we, we've done it. Our parents have taught us that this is how you brush your teeth, this is how you put your shoe on, these are how you put your clothes on. We got taught that behavior as, as a child, and as babies and infants. And now we're having to find, we have to retrain ourselves into some of our more sophisticated, uh, gnarly, um, complex habits. Well, actually, I wouldn't even say complex because they're just, they're really interwoven into many years of, you know, whether it's because of indoctrination of other people's beliefs onto you or whether it's because you, you've had to assume a certain set of habits to survive or thrive in your environment. And so here's the dangerous thing. You don't need to be aware of a habit for it to even exhibit itself. Many people exhibit neurotic holding patterns, as I've referenced before, uh, as a term Elliot Hulse uses, um, and, and kind of Carl Jung-ish type of 
uh, behave, uh, reference where people exhibit certain traits. Maybe they, maybe they don't give you a lot of eye contact. Maybe they constantly avoid eye contact when they are talking, but when you're talking, they give you strong eye contact. So there's something, uh, there's something that they got taught or they've learned about maintaining strong eye contact when they're delivering information. What could that be? That's that's one thing, you know, it could be fidgeting, it could be biting nails, it could be, you know, constantly um, having to uh, shake your leg or frequent blinking. So we all have these habits that have, well, really they're coping mechanisms for our environment. And, but let's go more tangible, like habits, like the smoking, the food addiction, the social media, uh, constant addiction. We have these habits, like the first thing you do, what is it in the morning? Well, that's a habit. Is it, is it this? Or is it, is it something else? And we're kind of on, we have to, I think there's a really important point here is to note down, and this is going to come later, but I'm going to bring it up now. Note down all of the habits that you exhibit throughout a day. This is how you become more aware. Write everything down. Go through just a reflection of all your day. Write down all the behaviors. Don't even think about habits. Write down all the things that you do. I brush my teeth. I get dressed. I do this. I go for a smoke. I pick up the newspaper. Whatever it is. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Then you do an audit. And you reflect on all these habits. Which ones did you choose consciously? Which ones are constructive? Which ones are destructive? Which ones are neutral? Because until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. That is Carl Jung. And I never really understood that quote from from Jung until I brought this context of habits. Like until we bring the unconscious of our behaviors to the forefront of consciousness and awareness, it's going to direct our life. It's going to run our life for us. And we're just going to say that's because the way it is. It is because it is. It is. What do people say? It is what it is. You're going to call it fate, but you have more control than you think until you make the unconscious conscious. That is the utility of thinking, reflection, journaling, writing, doing an audit of your day, having a calendar so you could stay accountable to your time and behaviors. And so James Clear actually has provided a resource on his website, Atomic Habits. Uh, there's a Atomic Habits scorecard. If you actually want to make a list of these daily habits, it's kind of he's made a template for you, and you can effectively already do it in a nice, succinct way. So from waking to sleeping, this is actually what he's put in the chapter as the challenge for the people reading. So this is, this is, what's the point of reading all these books if you're actually not going to do anything on the, on the back of them? So pause this, do that, or when you finish and you get out of whatever you're doing, do that scorecard and start doing some reflection instead of just tricking yourself into you think you're learning because you're watching some videos or listening to some podcasts and you think you're getting smarter, but you're not really doing anything on the back of that information. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm really talking to me. And you're going to categorize the following habits in constructive slash effective habits, destructive slash counterproductive habit, or neutral. And categorize them based on how they will help you or hurt you in the long term. Ask yourself, does this behavior help me or conflict with the person I am to be? My desired identity. Are these habits congruent or incongruent with the person you are trying to be? You need to ask yourself that. And that is how you figure out whether the habit is ultimately long-term con or destructive. This is just a self-awareness tool. So then you can build a framework and better foundation of better habits. Pattern interrupt tip. After you've experienced, so now we're talking, we're back to the behavior, right? After you've experienced the cue and the craving, what can we do? How do we interrupt the behavior if we know it's destructive and we don't want to do it? So you've gotten cued, whatever it is. You wake up in the morning, you walk out of your room, you walk into, maybe it's the kitchen bench, that's where your cigarette packet is. 
You see the cigarette packet in the kitchen. That cues you to have a craving to go outside and smoke. Then, in that moment, you speak your habit out loud before the response. It could be, I'm about to go smoke half a cigarette or a full cigarette outside. I'm about to go smoke my third hit of weed for today. I'm about to smoke that, my sixth line of coke for this week. Speak it out loud, whatever it is. I'm about to, the sex addicts, I'm about to, you know, fuck my 15th woman or man for the week or intercourse for the week, whatever. Speak it out loud. I'm about to hit watch on another episode of this show and that will affect my sleep by taking 30 minutes off it. Really important here. What I missed just before is you want to not only speak out loud what you're doing, but speak out loud the consequence or a potential consequence because you can get the Netflix loop. You just get, do you want to keep watching? Of course. Why would you ever stop? You can. You mean you could just sit there all day, every day, unlimited entertainment and you can just feed yourself unlimited food? Of course. Like the hedonism in us will say yes. So before you hit that play button again, I'm about to hit another episode of this show. This will impact me because now now I could be now I'm going to be late to work cuz I might miss my alarm. Or I'm about to eat that third cookie and that's going to spill me over my caloric budget for the day and possibly cause me some gassiness or fat gain that I'm not looking for. So hearing a bad habit spoken out loud makes the consequences appear more real. It adds weight to the action instead of uh, mindlessly slipping into the old routine. You can also do this for tasks and things you need to do in your schedule. For example, this. I didn't do this for what I'm doing right now. I had to sit down, I had to prepare the equipment, and I, you know, prepare the notes here. All right. I'm about to sit down and record another batch of chapters summary analysis for atomic habits this will help progress me in x y and z i won't go through all the benefits it is for me okay now if i don't and this is another thing here's how you can trick yourself into a positive habit into almost guilty if i don't do it i'm going to be another week behind i'm going to be in a week behind and I'm going to have delayed this task further in the future from being complete. And there's other consequences, obviously, like not reading that book, not reading that other chapter. I'm going to be less, I'm going to have a less sophisticated and educated understanding of the concepts I'm trying to understand compared to if I did and I read the book or I sat down and summarized the book or I studied. I'm going to be less prepared for the exam because these concepts. I will not have been as thoroughly uh, understood. So pattern interrupt, verbalize exactly what you're going to do after the craving. Interrupt yourself. Pro and con, even I'm going to go to the gym now. I'm going to go to sleep on time now. That's going to help me get the quality sleep so I can feel energetic in the morning, perform at my at the best, at the best I can. Next. To, con- to conclude, note card, note card strategy to build behavior awareness of unhealthy habits. This is James talking. In my research, I came across the story of a man named Zach who wanted to cut down on the amount of sugar in his diet. The problem was he didn't know when or why he consumed sugar, only that he did it too often. At the beginning of each day, Zach tucked three by five note card in his pockets when he found himself eating sugar he would pull out the card out of his pocket and quickly jot down five things who am i with what am i doing right now where am i when is it what emotions are driving my actions or what emotions am i feeling right now zach didn't always remember to fill in his card sometimes he wasn't sure how to answer you know a particular question at the time but at the end of the first week because he wasn't trying to be perfect he was just trying to be consistent and, and do his best. He, by the end of the week, he had a wealth of knowledge and new insights about what triggered his sugar habit, his sugar addiction. And so if you are even struggling with the first step where I don't even know where to begin, I don't even know, how do I even begin the awareness of why I do the, this behavior? 
because it might be so deep rooted you don't even you can't even think about how it began and why you do it use that method use this note card strategy of just quick reflection you don't have to physically do a note card you could have like an alarm in your phone to trigger you like every three hours about all right what am i doing what am i feeling da 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 and you can just put in your notes on your phone. It doesn't even look like you're doing anything obscure. No one's going to ask you. Because I know people get self-conscious about obscure behaviors. You pull out a note card in a social setting. You're going to get asked, well, what are you doing? You know, so there's strategies around just managing some of these behaviors, even, even behaviors to manage behaviors. So to build awareness of unhealthy and healthy habits, who am I with? What am I doing now? Where am I? When is it? What am I feeling? And those are questions we can ask ourselves in the day-to-day as well. Why do you perform habits when you do? When do you perform at your best? What emotions drive your best performance? What emotions drive your poorest performance? For me, sleep deprivation. I mean, it's very common for people, but sleep deprivation and hunger. They are two uh, states where I do not perform at my best from a... How do I say? When interacting with other human beings, right? I'm more of an asshole. I'm more blunt. I'm more direct. I'm more... I would say I'm probably more rational. I think there's... A, there's there's, a, there's more... I'm more of a... I'm more dispassionate. I'm more emotionally detached. And, and that can be... That can be of use and that can be of uh, disuse. That can be like really uh, disadvantageous to have those feelings when you're interacting with people or a person or a group of people. Um where you want to deliver, you need to have the tools of empathy, compassion, and consideration when you're dealing with other human beings. Or if you're by yourself, that can be used as a tool. Like if you're doing extended fasts, uh, for example, that can be a great tool to get a lot of cognitive cerebral work done. Okay, so what emotions drive your best performance? Obviously dictated by also who you're around in the environment. But we start asking ourselves that question, sleep deprivation, hunger, you know, in, in socially with interacting with other humans. Not my best self, but if I have to get a bunch of work done and I just fast, like I'm, I'm a demon, like I'm a calculated killer, like get out the way, I'm coming, you know? And so we, I like that, I'm a calculated killer, I like that. <laughs> and so this is now onto you guys listening. What's your version of that? Again, this is like, don't just listen to this shit, right? Actualize it, take the information and put it into rehearsal and practice. And next week, next week, in the next video, whenever you do watch chapter five, the best way to start a new habit, we're gonna talk about how actually, like how do you maximize adherence? How can you form implementation intentions, habit stacking, all these different strategies you can do to kind of hack your brain and behavior to start? Because that's often the biggest challenge for people. So if you guys want to keep seeing more of these, subscribe, hit notifications. Um, You can listen to these on all podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, everything, and YouTube. And I put snippets up on Instagram and just post a bunch of different various thought-provoking, philosophical meanderings that uh, I I, I think about and I go through on the day-to-day, week-to-week. So if you want to see that, you can there. All the links are in the description at Alexander Emanuel Sandalis everywhere. By typing in those three names, you will you will find me. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.